OnePager supports a variety of chart layouts that are driven by different settings for rows and for swim lanes. To help with terminology, each OnePager chart consists of multiple rows. In this first example, each row contains only one task in a traditional Gantt chart layout. In this next example, each row contains multiple tasks lined up left to right in more of a timeline layout. We'll talk through how to choose these different layouts in just a minute. Rows, in turn, can be grouped into swim lanes. Swim lanes are a collection of multiple rows based on a common theme. Here, we've added a swim lane grouping to the first example. We can regroup the same chart based on resource, so that every task, and therefore every row that's assigned to that same resource, ends up in the same swim lane grouping. In this example, we have three levels of nested swim lanes, grouping first by program, then by project, and then by phase. While many one-pager charts look great with just one level of swim lanes, it is sometimes useful to have multiple swim lane levels. One-pager supports up to three of them. To begin, we'll look at the different layout options that one-pager offers. Most of the time, users either want a timeline layout or a Gantt chart layout. All of your different row and swim lane options can be set up by going to the Home tab, then to the Chart Properties button, and then to the Rows and Swim Lanes tab. The first section at the top covers the layout of the chart. One pager gives you the option of either a Gantt chart layout with one task per row, or a timeline layout with multiple tasks lined up left to right in the same row. Let's take a look at this example project plan. If we import these tasks from the project plan into one pager and choose a Gantt chart layout, we'll get a chart that looks like this. If we want to create a timeline layout instead, we need to tell OnePager how to align tasks into a timeline. In other words, which tasks should be lined up with each other, and which tasks should be in their own row. If we look at the example project plan again, there are different summary tasks. The second level of summary tasks looks like a good way to create sequences of tasks so we can tell OnePager to create timelines based on the level 2 summary name. We probably also want OnePager to display the parent task next to each timeline, and we can do that by turning on a text column to display the level 2 summary name for each row in the chart. With these settings in place, OnePager will automatically align any tasks that share the same level 2 parent task. Notice that the second timeline is not perfectly condensed down to only one row. This is because of overlap between some of the collected tasks. When creating a timeline layout, OnePager lets you either allow or avoid overlap. If we choose not to stagger overlapping tasks instead, OnePager will ignore the fact that some of these tasks are scheduled at the same time and will place them all in one row no matter what. Now let's talk about swim lane groupings. Using the same project plan as before, notice that there is also a higher level parent task which OnePager calls the level 1 summary name. Underneath it are the level 2 summaries and beneath those are the individual tasks and milestones. We can tell OnePager to set up a swim lane grouping so that any rows underneath the same level 1 parent will end up in the same swim lane. To do this, return to Chart Properties and turn on the leftmost swim lane grouping to look at the level 1 summary name. Once that's complete, click OK, and you'll see that the first swim lane has three rows, while the second and third swim lanes each have two rows. Any field from your project plan can be used for swim lanes, so if you prefer to group and sort based on something other than your parent tasks, you certainly can. Other popular choices include resource assignments, department or functional area, product category, or sub-project in the case of multi-project or portfolio reports. For grouping into multiple levels of swim lanes, let's look at a more complicated example. In this project schedule, we have more levels in the WBS equating to program, project, and phase. The process to set up multi-level swim lanes is very similar to a single level. You just need to define more levels underneath that first swim lane level. 
On the rows and swim lanes tab, notice that there are three sub tabs for each level of swim lanes. Swim lanes are ordered left to right, so your left number one swim lane is always going to be the biggest grouping, while left number three will be the smallest grouping. In this example, we have already set the first swim lane to the level one summary name. Now, we'll set the second swim lane to the level two summary name. And finally, we'll set the third swim lane to the level three summary name. When you click OK, OnePager will group your chart three times instead of one. All of the tasks with the same level three parent task will end up in the third swim lane. Those swim lanes, in turn, will be grouped into a second swim lane whenever they share the same parent task. And those swim lanes, finally, will be grouped one more time into the first swim lane, again, whenever they also share the same parent task. Most users are happy with simply grouping their swim lanes, but if you need to control the formatting of your swim lanes to control headings, background colors, or other cosmetic elements, you can click on the Swim Lane Formatting button for more advanced options. Each of OnePager's three swim lane levels has its own swim lane formatting controls, so if you do use multiple swim lane levels, be sure that you are formatting the correct level when you click on this button. Earlier in this video, we turned on a text column to help label some of the timelines that we created. Text columns are a useful way to incorporate additional data into your chart that might not fit cleanly in other places. OnePager supports up to five custom text columns, which can be mapped to any field from your project schedule. Just like swim lanes, text columns are numbered one to five from left to right, and will always sit to the right of your swim lanes. To configure text columns, return to the Rows and Swim Lanes tab. At the bottom, you will see five sub-tabs, one for each text column. On each of these tabs, you will have the option to first choose which field from your project schedule should be used, and then once that field has been selected, you will have additional text formatting options that are based on the data type of the field you're using. For example, the first text column is mapped to the resource names field, so there really isn't much formatting to be done. The second text column is mapped to cost, and the third text column is mapped to percent complete, so both of these text columns have numeric formatting options. The fourth and fifth text columns are mapped to the start and finish date, so all of their formatting options will be date driven. If you would like more ways to control the look and feel of your text columns, click the Text Column Formatting button on any of the five tabs, and you'll have the ability to configure colors, headers, and more. For more information, please review our other videos, or you can visit onepager.com forward slash support, or email us at support at onepager.com.